Hey, everybody, it's Friday night, and we are the fabulous ASEA 5, and we meet here every Friday night to share information with you on these miraculous molecules that we call redox signaling molecules. Now, this is not, there's a bunch of healthcare professionals on here. I'm Dr. Maureen Hayes from Galveston, Texas, uh, anesthesiologist and pain specialist in the past, now full-time educator on redox. I'm joined by Jim and Ann Glenn from San Antonio. Jim is our oh. money name. <laughs> He's a former stockbroker, and Ann is a nutritionist and a personal trainer. And then we have the highly acclaimed Dr. Lee Osler from Washington State. He was mm. the past president, one of the founders of AOSH, the Amer that's the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health, and the author of the brand new Redox Matters, which is taking a SIA by storm. Awesome. Kind of gives, yeah, uh, gives you the perspective. <laughs> I feel bad. I don't have mine. <laughs> in front of me. Uh, so in any case, you'll hear a little bit more about that is a fabulous, fabulous book and had a brilliant person write the foreword. So, you know, just saying. Oh, oh, and oh, who did thank that? You. Thank you, Maureen. That's very yeah, sweet. Yeah, right. Way to go, Aaron. <laughs> so um, tonight we have a fan favorite back, Dr. Aaron Kaufman from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. He is a um, family practice doctor, still practicing, still seeing patients and sharing information about redox with his patients. So Dr. Aaron, I would love for you to come on, kind of tell, you know, I, we've heard your story before, but for the people out here who don't know who you are, that don't know how you got um, introduced to this, can you tell us about basically how it came to your attention what you did, kind of a prolonged um, due diligence that you did, kind of the science that you looked at, and kind of bring us back to that, to the very beginning of when you, you joined to see and what you saw. Thanks. And real quick, Maureen, can we get Lee to go ahead and just give the disclaimer up front, please? Absolutely, Dr. Lee. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, Lee. Be I'd be happy to. You're going to hear some amazing things tonight in references to um, perhaps you might call them solutions. However, what we're talking about is not a diagnosis for or a treatment of any disease or element. And uh, this, this is, these are supplement, these molecules and this technology is a supplement controlled tightly by the FDA and what we can make claims about and not make claims about. And so we would ask you to keep that in mind as we talk about many health related things tonight and understand that we're focusing on cellular health tonight. Right. Aaron, Dr. Kaufman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks all of you. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. I was thinking, okay, I'm going to tell the story again. And uh, it's been eight and a half years. Maureen and I got in about the same time. We saw this and, you know, I jumped on board. Well, we both had it, drug our feet, but Nonetheless, it's interesting. So, so, so much has happened since then. It's like, oh, we're going back to there, you know. Anyway, the story is, and it's a good story, is uh, I was very uh, network marketing averse based on experiences in the 80s and 90s with really amazing products that, you know, were being, you know, hyped and misrepresented. And there was, you know, some frank deception going on, and that's just not who I am. So over the years, being in, you know, functional or integrative uh, family medicine here in Albuquerque for 35 years, in attracting a clientele that's very, you know, somewhat more than the, the norm, uh, um, you know, alternative, integrative, you know, supplement and, you know, things that help improve health oriented, I always heard for 20 plus years about the latest, greatest juice and antioxidant and, uh, you know, zeolites and all this kind of stuff. And I was so ingrammated by my experiences in network marketing from uh, the 80s and 90s. I would ask people, is this network marketing? They would say, yes, I would go, absolutely not. And I was serious. So... A dear friend, uh, doctor uh, of education, uh, friend, patient, came to me in sometime in 2012 and told me about this. And I said, is it network marketing? She said, yes. I said, 
absolutely not. I'm not interested. I don't want to do it. You know, height, misrepresentation. But she was smart. She knew I was a runner. I live in Cedar Crest, New Mexico. I'm sitting here at 7,000 feet. It's beautiful. I was thinking I should take the computer and show you. We just had this incredible rainstorm. And the high desert, you know, the mountains over the high desert, you know, after a rain are just spectacular. It's like life, prana is emanating. But anyway, so I live at 7,000 feet. And since uh, I moved here in 1997, I've been running out my back door up through the Cibola National Forest up to 8,000 feet and back like three, four times a week. And she knew that. She knew I was a runner. I've been running for uh, since I was 21, 22. And I'm 68 now. And uh, she starts giving me, I, I said no, and she starts dripping on me. She starts giving me research articles. And interestingly, early on in ASEA, uh, Mark Tunnell, who's Nancy Tunnell's uh, husband, you know, Virtus's son-in-law, starts drinking this like I guess most of the family did. And he's a cyclist. He's a high performance cyclist. And he's having all these amazing things happening. And it's early on and they're not sure what this really is and what it does. It's the, you know, investigative, the first days. And, uh, you know, very exciting. And he's having these results. So they contact Dr. David Neiman, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, research physiologist, exercise physiologist down at Appalachian State in the Research Triangle and the Human Performance Lab, and they start doing studies on athletes. And, you know, all these things having to do with, you know, oxygen carrying capacity and so forth. And so she's giving me one article after another after another. And the ones that really grab my attention is these high performance cyclists when they drank eight ounces of ASEA. Within 15 minutes, they had these huge metabolic shifts and all the precursors and the intermediaries to the Krebs cycle, which is the energy production cycle. So that was pretty compelling just from a scientific, you know, being a medical scientist. But then they exercised them and they found that their time to hit the ventilatory threshold basically when they hit the wall they couldn't get enough oxygen to go faster or further was extended 12 percent in the people that were drinking ASEA versus placebo and there's additional factors it was all like this divine conspiracy in my mind you know it's like not only was it double blinded and placebo control and randomized, they had crossovers and washouts, which means the control group and the, you know, nobody knows who's getting what, not even the, the uh, um, evaluate, the investigators. And after I think a week, they let them wash out, they stopped it, and then they switched them. And so the, uh, the other group was getting the placebo and the other group was getting the ASEA. And I think they did that twice. And it confirmed that these, these people went 12% further uh, or further before they hit this ventilatory threshold. And just for reference, I think uh, when, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, cyclist who won the- uh, Say again? Lance Armstrong. Yes. When he was doing his doping and so forth, it increased his ventilatory thresholds like 3% is what I've been told. At any rate, so that was compelling and is really good science. As a medical scientist, I really appreciated that. And they found mice going 29% further before they were exhausted. And I don't know what they did, fell off the wheel or whatever. And this is what I was doing when I was running up the mountain. I would- hey, real quick. You know, Dr. Kaufman, can yeah. you explain what a metabolic shift is? Because I know that's that can. What is that? I mean, a lot. I'm not medical, so can you explain that for my benefit? Sure, sure. Well, in yeah. this case, metabolic shift can mean a whole lot of things, but in this case, it was referring to these things they call metabolites, which are precursors to the Krebs cycle, which is the energy production cycle, and okay. intermediaries. 
So it basically says it's upregulating the energy production cycle. So that's a good that thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. I, well, obviously. When you're busting your hump up the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So there are for 23 years of running these trails. Well, at that, that point, it was 16 years of running these trails from 7,000 to 8,000 feet. There were eight places going uphill where I would max myself. And I, I love the feeling. A lot of people think it's bizarre, but I would just be, <gasps> and I couldn't get enough air. You know, it was like I maxed and I would walk for a few minutes and then I would start running again. And here's these studies that showed these athletes that couldn't go any further going 12% further. So it took me a year and a half of investigation during which I went to uh, pubmed.gov and uh, which is the government's, the US government's website for all the peer reviewed medical research. And just for reference, this is uh, 2012. I, like most healthcare per personnel had never heard of redox signaling because this is a relatively new science. You know, the people won the Nobel Prize first in 1998 for demonstrating the first redox molecules. And so I hadn't heard of it. And here's all these studies that have to do with it. And they look, they're well done and pretty compelling. So I go to PubMed and I put in redox signaling in the search bar and 6,000 articles come up that have something to do with, you know, redox signaling is including in, in the article. And I start reading abstracts and it has to do with cancer and heart disease and all. And I read them until I start to get an understanding of just what this is. And by that time, this is about a year and a half later, I go, okay. <laughs> and interestingly, I had three daughters who were runners, surprise. And the middle one was a high performance runner. She was state champion in cross country and distance events uh, for four years in a row in high school and went to college on, you know, full running scholarship. And I said, this will help her, you know, because it's, you know, athletes perform better. And um, so I bought a case. She wouldn't drink it. It sat on the counter for it for I don't know how many months. And I keep looking at it every day and I finally go, OK, I'll drink it. And I only drank it on the days I was going to run. And I think I drank four ounces. I don't remember. And that was it, you know, and so it lasted me a couple months. But what happened, Jim, was, Maureen, was within a month, I'm noticing myself power up the mountain harder and faster. And by three months, I think by two months, I said, I need some more. And she says, how are you drinking that? And I go, you know, before I run, basically, and she says, my, my recollection, I don't know if it's true, is she put her hands on her hips and says, well, you're supposed to drink it every day. And I go, oh, OK. And she gets me another case and I start drinking it every day. And by the end of three months, it was a month before I turned 60, I set new personal best times for these trails that I had been running at that time 16 years by 20%. Wow. So that got my attention. That was the big, you know, hey, pay attention here. And then uh, totally unexpected, because, again, we didn't really know what this was. And we had limited experiences. We were seeing a lot of amazing stuff. But at four months, all of a sudden, I started sleeping through the night every night. And for the previous pick a number, 20 years or so, I would be up at one, two, three in the morning, couldn't get back to sleep, got reading done, emails answered and so forth. So all of a sudden I'm sleeping and the books are piling up and the emails are getting dealt with. And I'm going, huh. And, you know, I'll, I'll sort of skirt around this to be compliant, but I had things that, you know, caused discomfort. And at four months, some of it stopped being, you know, uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, then something at seven months and part of my body at one year, which is an important concept because, 
it's not like you notice what you notice and it's very, very individual at, you know, one week, one month, one year, it's a progressive thing. And just for people who are listening or new, I think if you ask anybody who's been drinking these uh, redox molecules for a while and using them topically, that you continue to notice improvement for many, many years. So um, that was what got my attention and that's what got me to start using it and dig deeper and start telling my patients about it. Awesome. Yeah, if we could go back um, maybe a little bit to your um, disdain for network marketing. If I recall, you were complaining <laughs> You were complaining about the price to the woman with her hands on her hips. Oh, yeah. I just said, you know, that that was actually later. Yeah, that was after I'd gone. Oh, I was upset. You know, I was very upset because I was thinking I was just going to blow this off. And I said to her, you know, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to use this because I'm feeling so good. I'm running like an animal and, you know, <laughs> I'm not in, you know, as much discomfort. I'm going to have to drink this for the rest of my life. I was upset, you know, <laughs> and I go, it's not cheap. And she again, I, I have this memory because she's that kind of person of her hands on her hips going, well, if you tell six people you know, yours gets paid for. And I, I do this again. And it's like, but what I did, Maureen, was, you know, it sort of sunk in. And I was talking to a patient one day. And, you know, what do they do? They tell you all the things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. And here are these molecules of youth is the way I tell people to think about it. Right. You have tons of these things when you're a child. And, you know, starting at puberty, less and less and less. You know, at 68, I probably got 10% of what, you know, I'm decent today. I probably got 10% of what I had was when I was a kid. So very pointedly, you could say that aging is a deficiency of these molecules. And this is the first time anybody's ever stabilized them so we can replenish them. And so, you know, she's telling me this and, you know, I'm kind of getting the, you know, again, it's early on don't fully understand what they do and what they're about, but I really kind of get it just real basically that really sick people can benefit, really old people can benefit and athletes. So I'm sitting there and patients come in and tell me, oh, this problem, that problem. And I go, the first, I don't know how many, <laughs> you know, because of this aversion, I roll my eyes. I, this is what I do, I swear, very professional, right? I roll my eyes and I go, you know, I've been drinking this stuff called Asia. And they would look <laughs> up and to the right. And I'd go, no, it's not the acai berry. And they would go, oh, okay. And I would say, you know, I've been running like an animal and things, I would say more than discomfort at that time. But, uh, and I'm sleeping like I hadn't slept in, you know, 20 years or so. And they, you know, this is an important concept. You know, my experience in the old days with trying to push products was as soon as I started telling them about stuff and they understood what it was, they would be either physically or emotionally backing up. And I'm sitting here telling this story about my experiences and they're leaning in and their eyes are getting big. You know, like when you read a story to a kid and when they're little, they're like this. And I'm going, huh? And I swear just that little intro, these are the molecules of youth and whatever I said, maybe a minute, three of the first 10 people raised their hand and said, I want that. Yeah. And the first one, I really said this, I said, you do, you know, cause I was, <laughs> you know, and, um, I started telling people and telling people and seeing things and still to this day, eight and a half years later, I still see stuff you don't see in mainstream medicine, you know, or even alternative, you know, alternative health care and so forth. This, you know, they're just things you don't see that you turning on cellular uh, efficiency does. But it's an important concept from a marketing standpoint. When you tell a personal story and 
you know, from your heart and with feeling and so forth, not like hype or whatever. People put themselves in that story. And I came to realize this is a storytelling business. And all of us have the experience. You can, you know, there are people who want to know the science to up the wazoo. And, and, you know, I know, Lee, you know, you and Jim have talked about, you know, your background and so forth. You needed the science and you're a true medical scientist like I was, probably like Marion was also. But I have the experience, I know you guys probably have too, of giving people more articles, giving them stuff on this, getting on three-way calls and for an hour and talking about the science. And they kind of finally start to understand and then they drift away. Versus they have an experience. You know, they drink it and something happens and boom, they're, they're on board. So that, I, I think that's a pretty important concept for people who are listening. I love it. And, you know, if you think about it, the, you know, as doctors, when a patient comes and gives us their history, it's their story, right? You know, we all, people always say, oh, I have to see the science. I have to see the empirical data. Well, when we're treating, we're basically going on a subjective information, right? You know, did it get better? How much better? Where is your level of discomfort? You know, um, so it's really interesting. That's a much more human way of giving the information is by telling the story. So I love that. And I, you know, I was like you, I, I didn't take a year and a half to get involved. I did take six months. I sat out for six months because I had gone back into training. And of course I just wanted the product to see how my husband would do. I was not interested in sharing it. I was not seeing patients at that time, but I had a couple of friends that I just sort of offhandedly mentioned it to, you know, may help you if it doesn't get your money back and I don't care. And they had, in fact, they had faster results than I did. It took about six weeks for us to notice anything. And that was taking it every day. So it's really important what you were saying, Aaron, about people need to stay with it, give themselves some grace, have some patience. You didn't get sick overnight. You're not going to get better overnight. And it is a work in progress. It's a biohack to make your body work better. But some things are just still going to take it a little bit of time. So well, I Certainly. love that. But, but again, Maureen, the, the basic concept principle is there, you know, six weeks before you had an experience, but your friends had experiences early on. If you hadn't, if they hadn't had experiences, you'd probably be who knows where. So it really is a very important, you know, concept that people need an experience. So how do you do that? I mean, do you have them drink more quicker, which is kind of what we do? But do you also explain, like we do, it's a lifelong journey. It's not like you eat good for a week and then you stop or you don't, you know, drink water like you should or exercise or sleep. So how do you convey, maybe all of y'all, how do you convey this is a life choice? Well, two parts to what you said, Jim. One is you get in the whole picture. I mean, not all at once, maybe, but, you know, just, you know, you feed them what they're ready for. But, yeah, you communicate at some point, you know, maybe when they've been drinking it for a month and going, well, I'm noticing this. But, you know, then you kind of introduce that lifelong thing. And, you know, early on, I typically, you know, talk about euthening and the decline in, you know, our redox molecules over age. But to give them the experience early on, so you, you've told stories and they're intrigued and they go, whatever, and you either get them using it or not. But wow, what a powerful tool Renew 28 is. The, the, I was ask you if that's for what new you people, need. you know, the redox gel that arguably is about four times as concentrated in redox molecules. And instead of this, which is pure redox molecules disseminating over your whole body, I, I weigh about 180. And, you know, if you're drinking four ounces a day, a low dose, you're going to wait a while, probably very, very individual to notice things. And again, progressive versus using something that's much more concentrated on one spot and it all works right there some is systemically absorbed but you know it works where you put it here wherever 
And, you know, Silverman and Dr. Silverman and Terry Latham, uh, um, you know, actually Chuck Tyndall, you know, have come up with techniques that give people, you know, I call it, you know, parlor tricks, but people have an experience right now and it sort of wows them. So, yeah, I use those. Real quick, oh, go ahead, Ian. Well, I was just thinking about the way you said you used it on just the days that you were running. And, and I think until people understand how important these molecules are, that redox, like his book, matters, until they realize how big a deal they are to our body, they categorize it as, well, I'll use it today, like the stuff at the store. Just another right supplement. Now, you know? And let's see what it does. And they don't get it. And it took you, you know, the time to figure out that you truly do need to do these every single day. And right. I think when people look at the the cost is it's not real relevant to those that know that it's cheaper to be on this than it is to be injured or sick um, or you know, and maybe that's why that some of them were so eager to say, yeah, I want to look at it because. Maybe they were the health conscious people are thinking, OK, this could be the missing link. This could be uh -huh. what I've been missing. I want better health. You know, I love the word that you use, the the molecule, the youthening molecules or the molecules you wrote. Molecules of faith. Yeah, mm -hmm. of youth. I love that. But uh, could be, it could be a new website, molecules of youth. But um, <laughs> so just the fact that, you know, if people would be willing to invest in you know the monthly supplement and then the, they can earn it by loyalty rewards or earning it as a business you know we feel obligated to send it or send information or plant a seed to as many people we cross paths with because healthy people need it to keep the best health somebody injured needs it somebody not so well needs to get better and and so that's why um you know i just I don't even hesitate to, to share it with people I love because and, they could try it. And what we're seeing, doctors, and it's all of y'all explain this, even with the with the mouth health, Lee, but are we not seeing younger and younger people getting issues? Yeah. Sure. Dr. Yeah. Kaufman, I mean, usually people go through a lot of other steps, correct, before they come see you? Maybe. Maybe, Some maybe yes, not. But, but do you... Do you see younger and younger people coming in to see you? And then same thing with you, Lee. Do you see, you know, the the mouth, the oral systemic health? Do you see that deteriorating uh, in younger and younger people? Can I make Aaron? a quick comment on what Ann said? Yeah. I'm going to. It doesn't matter whether you give me I know, a question or not. I was going to say no, <laughs> but it wasn't any really good. No, answer the question. Stick to the script, <laughs> right? So, you know, I think, Anne, that's, that's you be, obviously you be, our, Rob, what's that? I said you won't be asked back, but yeah, that's right, okay. Right. Are, are you giving Have me we a agree look? Like, coming back? Wait a minute, let me look at your face, Maureen. What are you trying to communicate here? <laughs> Give me the answers. So, you know, I think that's the big challenge that we face with this amazing technology it is brand new. It's like Alan said, Alan Noble says, there's not a shelf in the health food store right. that has cell signaling supplements. Cell signaling. Category product. creator. Yeah, category creator. And so human nature, the, mi the mind and ego of human beings tend to go, oh, this is like, and I love the right. lines, it's not like anything you've ever seen, but they don't get it. And they want to categorize it, just what you, you guys were saying. And so it's this real challenge to go, this is not like anything. Here's what it is and, you know, have the experience. And anyway, what I really love when I'm doing presentations is people going, you know, listening. And, you know, I think I do a pretty good job and I give a good description that's, you know, comprehensible to lay people of the science and the research. And here's, you know, pictures, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And I paint a picture. But up until then, it's sort of like, huh, well, isn't that interesting? As soon as they have that experience, as yeah. soon as they put it on and, you know, whatever happens, we won't go into that. But whatever happens when they rub it on and they go, wow. That's crazy. You know, 
you know, I had one guy look at me, rubbed it on his uh, neck and his, he had some issues with his shoulder, right? And uh, I said, how does it feel now? And he looks at me, he goes, this is stupid because <laughs> it just wasn't an issue in like 10 seconds. You know, hey, Aaron, was what's that? Well, I was going to say, here's something that we Jerry White has shared with us and something I would ask someone brand new that's that wants to know for sure right now that it's real. And they have a bubbly, outgoing personality, but get that tube, right? And go approach family members or people out and about. Anybody. Hey, Maureen, you look like you're limping a little bit. You may have some discomfort over there. Hey, I got some crazy stuff. But if they do that, Aaron, and they get seven or eight or nine of the ten, they go, holy moly, Doc, what is that stuff? Right. That is when they go, oh, my golly. But how many people are willing to do that? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's just like I am. anything else. Yeah, you are, and I am, and all of us are. But general population, how much, how small of 1%? How much less than one percent? But right. you know the the whole point do is it. doing. Yeah. You have to be you have to be careful though. Have you ever heard Terry Latham's story about seeing somebody who was limping and wanting to help them, and he's like chasing them, and they're running with their they're limping really fast trying to get away from them. So you do have to be you have to be careful. Yeah, Not yeah, strangers. If I, if I didn't know it. if I didn't know Terry and he was running after me, I would run too, even with my no, mask. True. Up. True. Yeah. But the whole point is you're giving a meeting and everybody's kind of mentally, cognitively going, oh, yeah, OK, I'm tracking. This is interesting. But then it's like they rub it on and all of a sudden this amazing experience. And, you know, I, I tell them what they have just experienced. And I say, so now this is true and this is true. You know, I'm, I'm doing like the gene study and saying how it influences all these systems. And all of a sudden, it's real. And that's a yeah. key piece, I think. Now, now, something that we have to deal with as well, and that's why it's so awesome to give people an experience, because then when they go, and maybe, Lee, you can answer this. And if you don't mind, Lee, also, what are these molecules? What the heck are we talking about? But when you give somebody an experience, oh, yeah, Redox <laughs> Matters. Go ahead and read it's, it. Uh, page <laughs> 26. <laughs> Well, now you made me forget what I was going to say, Aaron. Well, doing the experience. I'm powerful. I made you forget. <laughs> but when you give them an experience and then they go like what I did back in the beginning before I knew what this was, what did I do to my computer? I went and typed in Google, right? I typed in ASEA and then it was like, it's a scam. But guess what? I had already had my experience. Yeah. So that negated that silly article that some bad people that don't want this coming out into the public's hands are going to, you know, and don't believe, you know, fake news, right? But that's what's so critical, Aaron. I, I really appreciate you bringing that up is giving people an experience. Now, Dr. Lee, you, you're you the you're the author, published, going to be top 10 on the, uh, on the uh, New York top 10 list, I'm sure, soon, at least our list. Can you explain what the heck we're talking about? What are these molecules? Yeah, before I... Before I go there, I just want to touch on one thing, a couple of things. Earlier, you were talking about how slow problems onset. You know, we start mid-teens, you know, late teens declining. <clears throat> that rate of decline is 1% a year. <clears throat> Mitochondrial efficiency decreases at 1% a year. Collagen production, um, muscle mass, um, all of these things, uh, exercise capacity, that all decreases at about 1% a year. Isn't that interesting? As our mitochondria's efficiency decreases, everything around us is decreasing over time. And that's part of what this is, this is about. <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's about asking the question, how does our body, how does our cells know what to do when these things start to occur? If, I, if, my, if a cell in my body is exposed to a toxin, if it becomes hypoxic, um, if there's a problem, if it increases in oxidation, what is it supposed to do? How does it respond? We're, we're talking about these experiences and, and every one of us you know, here on the call have had those or personally witnessed them. We know they're true, but we don't always know exactly why. And that was one of, that's what really took me into the deep dive was I had to be able to explain why. And now that I can pair that, I can, I can, 
pair that up with my, what I'm observing, and now I know why it like it it's rock solid. And so um, I, I think when you put those together, it deepens your understanding, it deepens your knowledge, uh, if you will, it, it deepens your uh, you know your redox or a see a testimony, if you will. And, and, and all of a sudden, the stories of other people who have different kinds of experiences begin to make sense. And so as this mitochondria inefficiency is occurring, a state of oxidation occurs in the cell. And when there's oxidation in the cell, that's the precursor to inflammation. Well, we can go out in the marketplace and get all kinds of things that are anti-inflammatory. You know, we, we take anti-inflammatories all the time. But what if I could go upstream in the inflammation process, in the pathway? What if I could go upstream and not just be anti-inflammatory? What if I could be non-inflammatory? What if I could stop the process before it even started? And that's this whole idea of signaling. It's the communication that takes place at even below the genetic level. Again, the question is, how does my DNA even know to do whatever it's going to do? How do I express genes? We call it gene expression, because that can be good or bad. I mean, bad genes can express, and I'll have bad diseases result. But what if I can manipulate healthy gene expression? What if I can turn on healthy cytoprotective cell defenses that protect me from all of these things happening, the onset of inflammation. And I'm not going to say that we're going to reverse the, the, the aging in terms of my birth days, but I can reverse these processes. And therefore, the doctor inside of me, the doctor within, can turn on and activate and begin defending me like I was meant to when I, and, and which happened when I was younger. So in that sense, since some of us are down the road a ways, we are kind of reversing the process. We're going, we're going backwards, but it gets back to the idea if you want, if you want a root solution, you have to deal with the root cause. And that is at that cellular level. And that's the magic almost of what we have here, is we're actually reactivating basic cellular processes. And so that's what that's why you you pair this or marry this together understanding what's going on and why this is unique. Why is this a new category? Why doesn't anybody else have it as we have it? And you met and you marry that then with the experiential side of it of this is what happened to me. My my back discomfort is gone. You know, I'm thinking clear. My bowel movements are very different. And and on and on and on. Of course you all have heard my wife's experience or hopefully you have, which is what first you know caught my attention. And then I had personally, this is just my own, my own uh, bit of brain, you know, damage. I guess I had to go figure it out. <laughs> I I needed to know where the electrons went, you know, from one mom, one molecule to the next. Yeah. You know, Lee, I, I was listening to you, and I was thinking a number of things. Um, busy brain, you know. Um, one is you're you're describing turning on cellular efficiency, youthening cells. It's returning us, normalizing cellular function, which is damaged by all kinds of things, you know, in this very toxic world we live in, which, by the way, Jim, you were alluding to earlier and earlier, people are having these issues, whether it's oral or systemic, we're seeing younger and younger people, you know, 35, 40 years in healthcare, I've watched, you know, as a number of things happen, the first 20 years, as sugar was added to everything and people were drinking big gulps and eating candy bars and eating more and more processed food. Uh, we watched as obesity started to increase and, you know, then, uh, you know, more and more diabetes and, you know, um, basically 15 ish years ago. And my take is it was when we uh, started creating GMOs almost 20 years ago, genetically modified, you know, grains and so forth. And then when they start spraying Roundup on all of the corn and soy and the wheat, all of these things, diabetes and cancers and autoimmunity start going through the roof. And I watched this from the time I went in practice 
to now, it's insane the things we see. So, yeah, we're seeing things younger and younger, people in their 20s, teens sometimes, but younger and younger having huge dysfunction of whatever sort, disease processes. Yeah. So, Maureen, can you, can you explain real quick? You mentioned we hear oxidative stress and inflammation, and that's the root cause of a lot of problems, right? What are some of the basic things, and maybe Dr. Aaron just explained that, um, but what are some of the major causes for the increase in oxidative stress and inflammation? Great question. And, and it really does have to do with aging a lot. And actually, Dr. Kaufman was talking about it. It's, it's really lifestyle. Lifestyle changes are, you know, head off a lot of this sedentary lifestyles, um, the standard American diet, the fact that our food is fake, the fact that we have Roundup. Um, even stuff that we don't really think about, like, um, you know, here in Texas, we barbecue everything, right? You know, we like that char on the outside of our steaks or our ribs or whatever. That's not good for you. You know, those charred bits are called advanced, um, glycosylated. You probably remember this better than I do, Aaron, um, end products, and they can add to the aging. They add to the, to the oxidative stress of the cell. So all of these things are causing all these toxins in the air and our diets in our water, um, even uh, electromagnetic fields are causing stress on our body. So the oxidative stress is one of the things that is damaging us. Also, along with those mitochondria, and it's really, it's really interesting if you study mitochondria, they actually are more related to bacteria than they are to, to regular cells or, or regular um, you know, organelles in our, in our cells. And so they function a little bit differently. And as we know, our gut has most of our immune system in it. And so a lot of what we're doing with these lifestyle choices is, is causing changes to that microbiome. And we're also causing damage to our mitochondria. The same thing that's ruining those bacteria in our gut also can affect our mitochondria. And so you have to kind of deal with both of those to get back to, to better health. So all of those things work together to cause us, like Aaron was saying, you know, I've read where they've done, um, they've done autopsies on kids who got killed, say in car accidents or whatnot. And they've seen signs of atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries in 20 year olds. You know, that's, that's an old person's disease, right? You know, but because of these choices and these changes, and they're not all our fault, like Aaron was saying, you know, we can't help that there's round up on everything and they're, you know, we're, we're fighting it, but they're, they have dumped tons of that into the soil. I don't know that would ever get away from it. Um, but it's just, you know, it's really interesting. And here we have something that we know, and Aaron, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the study that was done a couple of years ago that actually fights oxidative stress in the body and, and is probably one of the reasons we see things coming back into homeostasis or into balance with our bodies and why we're slowing that age progression. Well, didn't the majority... Oh, good. Good. Go ahead, Aaron. You wrap it up. The, the story I heard about, I had heard that story too, Maureen, was, um, was the Korean War and the young boys were coming home from war. And at that time, atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease was considered an old man's disease, old people's disease. And here are these, you know, you know, young kids coming home in a box and they did autopsies and found the placking. And that was the generation uh, that was the impetus for them to do the Framingham studies and all that in the 60s and so forth. You know, this was late 50s and so forth. So that was where our concepts of, you know, coronary artery disease and, and atherosclerosis came from was just what you're talking about. Wow. Didn't, you know, it's interesting because that was really before trans fats became so popular, you know, yeah. and that's, a, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mar crazy. The margarine era. Crazy. Didn't the majority of most diseases known today come after World War II? I mean, it seems like there's so many conveniences of, of the day that the people still have choices. They can choose not to use as much microwaving. They can choose not to buy so much sugar or salt because 
they don't realize sugar and salt triggers the brain to want more sugar and salt. And that's what happens if you choose to eat this, that, and the other. But what I like about ASEA is we're all cellular. We've got the redox signaling to gener regenerate cells. We've got the topical to make it easy to see something going on. And then we have the nutrition. And if you really study that nutrition on what makes source so different, and, and of course, our, um, you know, we've got bamboo silica in our two of our products. And if you study the benefits of what that is and that it's covering, you know, the collagen and all these things that, the, and then you got omega and all the things it does for the heart, you really have everything you need for good health in nine products. I mean, how simple is that? I mean, one of our, one of our new leaders with another company said, wouldn't she was with another company. She still is, but wouldn't y'all rather, instead of, educating somebody on 55, 60 products, wouldn't you just want to educate them on, you got redox signaling, category creator, and a couple other things. And, and, and she doesn't have to go nuts with all the educating of all that other stuff. So it's just neat how we can address what our body's lacking just by giving back these, these essentials, really. They are essentials. What do you think so. of the nutritionals, Aaron? I love them. Yeah, you know, great story. So the nutritional, I, you know, I've got a dispensary in my clinic with probably 120 different supplements of various sorts, uh, herbs, homeopathics, glandulars, you know, mm -hmm. vitamins, whatnot. And, you know, the ones we carry, the ones we use a lot and they are, you know, good quality and hopefully good price too. But, uh, you know, I, that's my bailiwick. That's what I do you know, for 35 years. And so whatever it was four years ago or so, uh, ASEA announces they're going to come out with Source and then, you know, Life Max and, and uh, uh, Biome. And I'm, I'm upset. You know, I get upset a lot. <laughs> oh, I, I go, they didn't ask me, <laughs> you know, this is what I do. And they didn't ask me. The products come out and I remember, you know, when they first released Source, and we had this Saturday morning meeting, and this mm -hmm. woman, uh, you know, who came to the meeting, and she had taken her first dose of, or two, you know, capsules of Source, you know, which is a natural, quote, multi. It's a micronutrient, uh, you know, superfood formula and so forth with the secret sauces and all. And she's saying, I feel so energized. <laughs> we carry the best of the best, you know, nutritionals, the, the best multis and so forth. Nobody feels them, you know, nobody feels a multi. So that got my attention and I did too, you know, it wasn't dramatic, but I felt it. And then uh, probably the most exciting one for me is the biome. We carried, I think, three different probiotics prior to biome. One was a daily use that was really good. Um, we had one for the more resistant cases that had Saccharomyces in it. And then we had a bomb for uh, people who had that severe antibiotic resistant diarrhea and so forth. And uh, they all worked pretty well. Some of them would upset people's stomachs, the gut bombs and so forth. So Biome comes out and I'm looking at it and I've never seen, you know, they did a great job of educating us and promoting it. I've, it's got 12 probiotics that are targeted, you know, for dental health, for the brain, for allergies, for all kinds of things, as well as recolonizing, normalizing gut bacteria. And I mean, how brilliant to put in prebiotics with the probiotics so they're nourished and you nourish the gut bacteria and to put in slippery elm which soothes the entire alimentary canal from here to the end. And lo and behold, I start using it. Every single person, doesn't matter what, gets better. Yeah. And nobody has any discomfort with it. And it's very affordable. And I can, mm -hmm. with great assurity say, this is almost guaranteed to take care of you. 
So yeah, I love it. And, you know, I take Life Max and uh, Omega. Omega, you know, no fish burp. It's, you know, high potency Omega, you know, DHA and EPA. I love it. You know, I think they're wonderful. You know, and have you noticed or have you, you know, the one thing when you take really a lot of vitamins is um, your urine turns fluorescent. You, you guys always talk about poop. I'm going to talk about urine. You know, <laughs> the urine always like it's, it's sort of that bright chartreuse color when you go to the bathroom. I take all of my source. So in fact, I take, I take them all at, all at the same time. You know, first thing in the morning, I take all four source. I love taking them like that because you do feel that energy. Um, and so I take them all together. I have never seen a change in the color of my urine ever. What that says to me is that they're extremely bioavailable and we're actually absorbing and utilizing what is in that. And, and so you're getting your money's worth, you know, and that's you know, fabulous. I love that these are all food. They're all yeah, whole yeah. food supplement. There's nothing synthesized. They're not like concentrating, you know, uh, vitamin C or whatever it is, it's just concentrated food. So, you know, yeah, that's, you know, it's totally, totally bioavailable, you know, versus, yeah. you know, particularly the B vitamins, maybe the C that turns your urine yellow if you've got too much. Yeah. Now, real quick, Aaron, can you talk about the importance, I, I noticed what you're drinking right now, water. Um, why is that so important? for people that get on redox and, and all the above. Why is drinking water, being a sipper, what I used to call a chug-a-lugger, I used to chug-a-lug water, now I learned, no, no. You, you know, Russell Mariani said, no, you can't do that, you gotta be a sipper. But, but why is water intake so important uh, for the human body? And when you start on redox? Well, Jim, how much water is there in your body? What percentage of your cells is water? Yeah, 70%. 73% average. But, you know, and we, it's a fascinating phenomenon. <laughs> you know, I would tell people when I was younger, you know, my patients, I would say to these old people my age now, I would say, you need to drink more water. You're dehydrated, you know, and I would say you should be drinking half your body weight in ounces of good water, not tap water, which is full of chlorine and gosh knows what. I would say either filtered, you know, just a carbon block filter is adequate or I like alkaline water or spring water. And you need to drink half your body weight in ounces of water a day. And I would say, you need to do this. And they would hem and haw and so forth. And over the past couple of years, I'm noticing I don't drink as much water. I have no idea what the mechanism is, but it's real. So hydrating, does a lot of things. Your body, in a, in a lot of ways, particularly the kidneys, but you know, through our body, the liver, and so forth, we're detoxifying. We're pulling things out of our, you know, bloodstream, out of you know whatever we put into our body. However, we're breaking down things that are toxic to cells, and part of the process of sending those out of the body, excreting them, is hydration, urination, and so forth. If you're not properly hydrated, you won't detoxify, you will become toxic. Particularly, yeah. and probably the point you were getting at, with ASEA, you know, it's a powerful, powerful normalizer of cell function, euthanor oh, of yeah. cell function. What Lee was talking about, getting cells back to what they normally do. And here comes a normal American who's in very large measure toxic and they start drinking this and their body is trying to get, you know, the cells are waking up and they want to take the garbage out and there's not enough water. It's hard to get it out. So particularly when people start drinking this, they need to drink extra water. That's right. Now, awesome. can you really quick touch, and I'm trying to get all of our experts to talk about this because I think this is a critical point here. Setting correct redox expectations. How do you talk about that? I've been babbling the whole time. You guys go. <laughs> Lee? You're awesome. Or Maureen? Yes, You're the guest of honor here. 
That's right. Yeah, Aaron, just explain real quick how you share that with with people. Because look, everybody. if we don't set the correct expectations and they expect things to happen like that, they're going to stop. And then I take that very seriously because that, like Tyler Norton says, our founder says, well, that could really affect someone. That could hurt someone. But I think it's critical that we talk about we only have a couple of minutes left. How do you share that, the importance of setting correct expectations? Staying on it. Staying on it. Give it time. Well, you know, I think it's, you know, you can look at it a couple of ways, Jim. One is you can, oh, put the fire out or you can address it early on and have the correct expectations. So it's still going to happen, you know, and a lot of times people will make excuses and it has nothing to do with that. They have other reasons they don't want to, you know, continue. And it's, you know, part of the biz, you know, but again, that what we were talking about earlier, you know, hey, you're going to notice improvements progressively over time, unique to you. Here's what a lot of people experience. And here's, you know, within the first 30 days, 30% or so of people will have noticed something unique to them. You know, by 100 days, basically 100% of people have noticed something it will continue to improve my, I tell them my experience was it was about four years. I kept noticing new things. And in the last four plus years, every once in a while, I noticed something new, but most of it is maintaining. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the best we can do is try to anticipate and educate. And then right. as these things come up, say, Hey, that's natural. That's, you know, ex expected. Here's how to cope with it. That's my two cents. That's what yeah. I One of the things that we're up against is we tend to have a pharmacological mindset. Everybody's right. been trained to think that if I take a drug, an agent, a pill, whatever, that I'm going to have an effect. And if I don't experience or feel it right away, then it doesn't work. I need a different pain med or whatever, you know, medicine I'm on. And so you can't carry that. This this is an uh, this is not the same thing as apples or oranges, as they say. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> you know, Maureen? yeah. Maureen, I just, what do you say? I, the, you have a delay there. There you go. There's a delay on me. Okay, love it. Um, you know what? I usually because of the the study that we did a couple of years ago was done with eight ounces. I will talk to people and I say if you're over the age of 45, 50, you're already at a deficit, kind of what Dr. Kaufman was talking about earlier because of the decline in the mitochondrial function. Mm -hmm. I'll say, let's go ahead and replenish. You know, it's a bio replenishment agent. It's something that we have naturally in our bodies. We just have less of it or it's out of balance as we get older. So I like for people, if they can swing it, you know, to double up for at least their first month and then kind of reassess. Yeah. And the reason I do that is to kind of fill those coffers up but, you know, I tell people, this is to help you get a faster response. We can use the gel. We can get them that product experience that Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Lee were talking about. Um, but with, the, with using it systemically, drinking it, I want them to have the effects with the mood elevation, the better sleep, the, um, the increased energy faster. But some people can't really afford to do that. So you do have to set those expectations. We can increase it and try to get those benefits faster. Or you can stay on it longer. You're still going to be benefiting. It still is working, even if you don't feel it or notice anything. But you will have that aha moment if somebody put in the thing. You will get your magic at some point in time. Like I said, for me, it was six weeks. You know, for, for Dr. Kaufman, it was longer because he was drinking it like three times a week. You know, so <laughs> everybody is different. So, but, yeah. but you know what, you guys, it's, it's the best thing out there. I'll, yeah. I'll stop talking. Well, you know, talk. and I'm an ex-financial advisor and I used to do a lot of insurance and protecting people from tragedies. But, you know, that was typically a monthly investment. Um, and it's usually a monthly investment in the event something goes wrong. And what I like to try to get people to think about is make an investment in you to prolong, to get healthier, to get more active, to have more endurance, to have a better quality of life. And then I'll turn around and ask, Dr. Kaufman, are you worth the investment in yourself? Because that's what we're doing. But then you, you get people that stay on this for a period of time and come back later and ask them, was it worth it? And every single time, best investment I've ever made. I would never get off these molecules. So Dr. Kaufman, you're awesome. You're awesome.
So I have to tell you, I'm really disappointed. What? <laughs> you didn't get to you your asked, face? You asked, you asked the expert instead of me to explain redox signaling. I had just before we came on, I had this flash. Remember Tyler at one point, I don't know, I saw him on one call talk about where ASEA and redox biochemistry and all this was going and he said we're in the middle of the field and it keeps getting broader and broader yeah. and he was talking about you know where are we going and he was giving little hints and he was talking about well what is redox signaling it's power it's electricity yeah. and i had this flash leo appreciate it. next time we'll talk about this is that this is you know these redox signaling molecules have to do with the flow of electrons and this sort of divine innate wisdom the doctor is dr lee says you know knows where these electrons need to go to balance things out to youth and cells is this amazing wisdom and it really is just balancing making electrons yeah. go where they're supposed to go so I'm uh, really disappointed well, I didn't get to say all that. <laughs> you just did. Next time. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> well, guys, we ran, we ran a couple of minutes long. Thank you, Dr. Aaron. I'll have to apologize to the Aussies now. Right. So, guys, stick around for the Aussies. Next week, we have Donalyn Dominguez, and she'll be our, 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 uh, our amazing uh, guest. Everybody loves our Donalyn Dominguez. Uh, she's a midwife. She uh, was a midwife. She always will be a midwife. So, guys, we want to thank you, Dr. Kaufman. Thank you. And we will be having our annual conference, guys, in a couple of weeks. And we're kind of chit-chatting whether or not we'll do a live broadcast from there. So uh, we'll keep you informed on what we do. So, guys, yeah. thank you. Stick around for the Aussies. Thank you. Uh, they're on right now. So, Bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Good one. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. See you soon.